students and viewers uh, today this video discusses the intensive reading and extensive reading as a part of the reading skills and this video is mainly being recorded for uh, the students of bs communication skills as the topic is being suggested that uh, readings may have many kinds but today we shall be discussing only intensive and extensive reading so if you look at this slide it says that there are many types of reading already we are familiar with some of them brown for example in 1989 suggested that we have uh, these types of reading that is oral silent intensive linguistics content based and then we have certain extensive reading readings as well which may involve skimming and scanning and then comes the global one also so these are some of the uh, reading types or the techniques we are already familiar with. Uh, first of all, we shall be talking about intensive reading, what it's going to be. Brown once again quoting him, in, uh, he said in 1989 that uh, intensive reading when you want to do it involves number of things. For example, first of all, you need to get familiar with the grammatical forms. Uh, for this purpose, uh, you need to look into the text very carefully to see what grammatical forms are being used. And so definitely the passages which are given for reading should be smaller in size so that the students can very easily enter into the grammatical forms and see them. Uh, grammatical forms can be like uh, the sentence structure or the parts of speech or the functional sentences which have been used there. Similarly, intensive reading is done in order to see what vocabulary is available. Simple vocabulary or complex vocabulary. What is the meaning of uh, that vocabulary? Words are new or words are old or words are familiar or words are unfamiliar. These things are to be seen in intensive reading in the vocabulary section. Similarly, Brown is also suggested that discourse markers should also be found out and other surface structure details may also be found out. At BS level, it may not be that necessary, but still some of the markers of the discourse may be available. Uh, like uh, there can be the question mark, there can be the ex uh, exclamation mark, there can be other uh, intended words and meanings that may give a specific structure to the text that may be required to see. And same is the case with the meanings of the words. We have uh, meanings definitely, one of the dictionary meanings. These dictionary meanings should be uh, present in the mind of the student. But in the implication section, the student needs to see also how the meanings have been changed, how the meanings set in the text, and how the meanings can be understood, how they are working inside the text. Same is the case with the rhetorical devices. I mean, if some extra words have been used that uh, like calling words or uh, or we can say ah or uh, we can say bravo words as most of the speakers used. If these some of the devices have been used that uh, needs to be looked for this kind of uh, intensive reading. Uh, this intensive reading is also called narrow reading. Narrow reading again means to go and approach the text very carefully, read each and every sentence, every part of the sentence and looking at the words and the punctuation marks given and trying to understand the sentence in the background of the first sentence and the last sentence then the combining sentences also. So in that way, this uh, intensive reading can also be called as the narrow reading. Uh, intensive reading, why we do it? Intensive reading uh, can help us in uh, understanding the main idea of the text and then seeing the details, whether they match with each other or uh, they do not match with each other. And same is the case with the words which are present or the sentences which are present and then seeing whether the meaning of the sentences is the same, whether they have some irony in them, whether they have different hidden meanings in them in order to see that in intensive reading is con continued. Sometimes we need to make inferences. I mean, deducing results. Inferences means deducing results. Sometimes we need to deduce certain results out of the text and that is why we do intensive reading in order to make the inferencing. We also need to see uh, in the intensive reading how the words connect with each other. 
I mean, how the word is connected with the sentence and how the sentence is connected with the whole paragraph, that also needs to be seen. Then the relationship uh, of the word with the sentence and then the sentence with the paragraph, that also needs to be carried on. So in this way, intensive reading is done uh, with these kind of activities also in order to find out these things. Uh, teacher's role is very important in uh, intensive reading. For example, it is the teacher who chooses the part of the text to be given to the student and then the teacher also chooses the tasks and the activities and then teacher gives the direction, uh, pre-reading direction to the student and uh, while reading direction to the student and uh, after reading directions to the students also. And again, teacher also motivates the students by saying that they this will increase into their knowledge into their awareness that is why teacher prepares the students very well and ultimately the teacher's role also is to uh, ask the student to get certain answers out of them so that the intensive reading may take place very effectively there are some advantages of the, this intensive reading and some are disadvantages of intensive reading also uh, for example uh, the advantages are that that the students become very well aware of the idioms used in the text and the vocabulary used in the text and after that they study the sentence structure also. The students also are able to get a better control of language, have a better understanding of the language and in the same way the comprehension uh, level of the student also increases. These are some of the advantages but there are some disadvantages also that uh, most of the time reading takes place very little because the passages are to be given in intensive reading, their size is very little and so reading takes place very little. This is disadvantage. Same is the uh, case with the multiple readings. When every student is reading in the class and we are listening also, in that way there could be the disturbance on our understanding and as a result, uh, same reading material with every student does not increase the size and style of reading and the quality of reading also. So in this way, some are the benefits and some are the uh, disadvantages of uh, the intensive reading. Now the second kind of reading that we need to discuss in this section is the extensive reading. Brown also is useful here. Uh, he also said in 1989 that uh, extensive reading is done in order to carry out the general understanding of the text. This very much resembles with this uh, with the skimming of the say, skimming technique of reading long and richard also said that uh, extensive reading is the reading for gist is the reading for summary is the reading for very small description of any passage of time we don't need to understand each and every word we can even skip the words which we don't know the meaning of so skipping off unknown words can be done in this extensive reading Extensive reading is mostly done in order to capture the main idea or the theme of the paragraph. It is also done not for the sake of the specific details. We are just to go through the paragraph and find out what it is. So that is why extensive reading title is ex extensive. Extensive means long, big, extra. So that is why we are doing big reading and capturing little. In case of intensive reading, we do little reading and capture more. But in case of extensive reading, we do big reading and uh, capture little. For example, reading of short stories, reading of novels. You know, one novel can be of 300 pages. If we stop at every word, if we stop at every sentence, we will take a lot of time to read that. But if we just read for plier, I mean, just looking at the kind of de interesting details and passing out the difficult words, we can make the reading very quickly. So a 300 page novel can be read in one day or two day because we don't need to give examination out of that novel. We just mean to understand what is going on. So this type of uh, reading is called as the extensive reading. Day and Bamford in 1980 suggested some of the characteristics of uh, this extensive reading. Uh, they say that uh, extent, the, the variety of material should be given to the student uh, so every student can have a different material and the students have a role in the selection of the material as well. They can select for themselves which novel, which piece of writing they want to have for reading. This reading according to them is a reading for player. It is to get a general information. It is to get a general understanding, not to go specific about specific details. Uh, reading is also done silently in this extensive reading and uh, everybody can make one's own reading. 
and uh, this major characteristic of the extensive reading is that it has greater speed very much speed it can be done in very short time more speed of reading is done and involved in this type of reading so there are some of the characteristics of the extensive reading let us see which activities in the classroom can be done for the sake of uh, extensive reading uh, number one thing is that uh, the reading may be uh, uh, accompanied with a speaking that some sentences may be spoken by the students in that way uh, they will be able to read uh, very speedily and speak that also some may be involved in writing uh, for example what they have read on one page they may be writing about one or two sentences but what they have read about uh, they can also be given some newspaper or some other thing so that they can uh, write on uh, what is going on or speak on what is going on the uh, same is the case with that the teachers can give some book project to the student for example uh, in the end of the session or in the middle of the session students can be given one book project that they may read and bring a kind of a review of that book also and that will also involve fast reading or the extensive reading because basically extensive reading is for the player's sake and it's uh, it's not tedious it's not tiring it's very good it's beautiful because the students have not to take any type of examination in this regard so these are some of the activities of extensive reading here the teacher uh, may be recommending but the students can also suggest him that uh, they want to read this topic or that read a teacher is to choose the level of the material difficult or less difficult or more difficult depending on the fact whether the students of uh, what level maybe bs maybe ms or phd same is the case with the variety that the teacher can help the student to select the variety of topics so that the interest of the student may remain some of the role of the student is also there but we don't need to discuss that uh, there are some uh, good things in it there are some bad things in it for example one of the good thing is that students get a reading habit most of the time when we ask the student for intensive reading they feel bored they feel upset but if the extensive reading is given definitely they do it very quickly because here it's very easy to do so it increases the benefit and the confidence of the student it makes the student very much independent also student becomes aware of number of things in short time student understands grammatical competence also here and there uh, the students uh, can uh, develop the habit of reading comprehension as well overall language competence improves when the students are reading these type of things in extensive reading so uh, fox everything has ended thank you very much for watching and uh, therefore we have covered today the topic of intensive reading and that of the extensive reading one of the things included in the syllabi of most of the universities so here i am to say th uh, thank you to all of you and now for the remaining activities we shall meet again